time for the preview and prediction of the Bundesliga season for 22-23. As ever, when it comes to the Bundesliga, can anybody stop Bayern from winning the league and making 11 Bundesliga titles in a row? Can Dortmund challenge? Can Leipzig challenge? Can even Bayer Leverkusen challenge? An interesting battle for European places. Will Wolfsburg now rebound? Can Eintracht Frankfurt capitalize on their Europa League success? And of course, the relegation battle with two Bundesliga giants in Werder Bremen and Schalke being back in the league. And can they survive relegation this season? And as ever, when it comes to these predictions, let me know your prediction for the table of the Bundesliga this season in the comment section down below. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Further ado, let's get to the preview and prediction. In 18th position, I'm going to go with Bochum. I know they were a fairy tale story last season, survived, played some excellent football at times. Thomas Rice is a very good manager and did exceptionally well with the squad that really shouldn't have stayed up. But will second season syndrome hit this squad, similar to Armina Bielefeld last season? Were great in their comeback year, but key departures in defense, plus top goal scorer both they're moving the Schalke. I think this will be to their detriment, but I think Bochum will give it a fight. They're not going to go down easily like Greuther Firth last season. I think the relegation teams might get 30 points this season, but I think Bochum will be last and be relegated. 17th place. This might come as a bit of a shock, but I'm going to predict this. I'm going to go with Hertha Berlin at 17th position ever since November 2019. Hertha have had six different managers. Yes, count them six. Now, this is number seven with Sandro Schweitzer from for obviously the former Dynamo Moscow manager. Hertha have made some good signings in Kenny and from Everton and a UK on loan from CSK Moscow. But overall, this squad still hasn't improved defensively after conceding many goals last season. They don't have a consistent goal score. Hertha have been on the slide for the last couple of seasons. I think this might be their time. But maybe it's for the best and they can rebound and actually have a good structure because they've been pumping a lot of money into this squad and it's just gotten worse and worse and worse. But let's see, maybe Hertha can surprise me and survive this season. But I'm going to have them in 17th position. 16th position, Werder Bremen. One of the newly promoted sides, a Bundesliga giant. After only one season in the Bundesliga 2, Ole Werner completely changed the season for them last year with his squad playing in a 3-1-4-2 formation. With Doikish and Fulkrug were prolific up front. They need to have that same impact this season in the Bundesliga. Yes, they're not going to get 20 goals each, but something... Along the lines of 10 to 15 goals each. I think Werder Bremen can definitely survive. But it is going to be difficult. And Werder Bremen always are in a relegation battles. It seems like nowadays. I think they can somewhat replicate it. I think it's going to be an absolute fight for them to survive. Because this squad is still also not that good. When you still have Toprak in defense. He's a leader but he isn't that good anymore. I think Werder Bremen will somehow survive. I think you know being back in the Bundesliga will give them a lift. I'm going to go with them in 16th position. 15th position, I'm going to go with Schalke. Yes, the other Bundesliga giant that got promoted last season from Bundesliga 2. After one season and being so inconsistent until the end, Schalke then got promoted. And can former Bielefeld manager Frank Kramer, who did well with Armina Bielefeld. Well, yes, Simon Terode scored 30 goals last season. And this guy is basically a Bundesliga 2 merchant. He is an absolute destroyer and a... An insane goal scorer when it comes to Bundesliga 2. When he gets to the Bundesliga, his numbers completely fade away. He needs to at least get 10 to 15 goals for this side. But like I said, they added Polter from Bochum, which is going to help them. Must improve defensively to survive relegation. I think Schalke will do it with the combination of Polter and Simon Terode. Fourth team position, I'm going to go with Augsburg. Augsburg have been a bottom 10 team in the Bundesliga for the last seven seasons. And I feel like it's going to be number eight. With new manager Enrico Mabin, a risky hiring coming from Dortmund 2 side. Can he help Augsburg's lack of goal scoring? Pepe, of course, he's got to step up. He was their big signing last season. He still hasn't scored a goal in the Bundesliga. He's going to have to change that up. They're going to switch to a three in the back formation most likely. And Reese Oxford improved a lot last season and he's going to keep getting better. I think that's going to help Augsburg. But they're going to be a bottom 10 side. So I'm going to have them in 14th position. 13th position and somehow this side survived relegation last year. I have no clue how but they did Stuttgart. The key for Stuttgart is keeping one of Sasha Kalisic or Borna Salsa. If they sell both of them, then I think they could really be in trouble of relegation because we know those two guys are valuable, valuable, especially Sasha. I know he's not going to stay at Stuttgart for his whole career, but if they can at least keep him for one more season and they can find an adequate replacement, I think it will be good. Another player to watch out for is Tangu Kulvali. 
he could have a breakout season. Did Boel for Stuttgart last year. I think he's going to flourish. And if Matarazzi switches to a 4-3-3, which he did at times last year, I think it's going to help them. Tango Koulibaly. I'm going to have them in 13th position. They're going to be in and out of the relegation zone. 12th position, I'm going to have Mainz. Lots of changes in the back line for Mainz with Niakate and St. Just. But Maxim Leis is a good pickup from Bochum. It was excellent with Bochum. Plus, Ingo Watson was signed permanently for Mainz having secured their front line plus adding creative midfielder Fulgini from Angers in Ligue 1. I think Mainz will do well, but it's Mainz. I don't think they're expecting to go to European places, but I think a mid-table finish will do well for them once again. So Mainz are going to be in 12th position. In 11th position, I'm going to go with Hoffenheim. New manager Andre Breitenreiter will hope to continue his success from Zurich where he won the league for Zurich for the first time in many, many years. But defensively, Hoffenheim have to improve. We know this side is always attacking and plays a wonderful brand of football, but eventually the defense is going to catch up to them and they have to improve. Yes, Kabak will help, but how much of an upgrade is that? Plus, if they lose Ram to Leipzig, and there's been rumors of that, that could be a huge, huge loss. Bebu has been consistently good for last season, so I'm expecting him to improve, get to more than 10 goals in the year. And, you know, I think it's Hoffenheim 11th place position. I think they're going to be happy with that. Now we get to the top 10, and in 10th position, I'm going to go with Freiburg. Following Freiburg's arguably greatest season ever in club's history, making it to the uh, DFB Pokal final, obviously just missing out on the Champions League place. Losing Schlotterbeck is going to be massive. I, I have talked about Schlotterbeck. I think he is one of the best young center backs in Europe. He was immense for Freiburg last season. So that's going to be a big loss. Plus, they're going to have to balance Europa League group stage. I think they're going to try and focus on that, make a deep run in that competition. Plus the league, I think that could have fit Freiburg because they, I don't think they have the squad depth to compete in both competitions. But all the best, and I think it's it was amazing to watch them play last season with the way they could change formations and tactics and... I just think Schlotterbeck is a big loss. But 10th position for Freiburg. 9th position, I'm going to go with FC Köln. Can Modest continue his amazing form like he showed last season? 20 goals again for Modest. This guy is just a goal scoring machine when it comes to FC Köln. Also adding more forward depth in Adam Mian and Tigues. FC Köln are in a similar position to Freiburg where they're going to have to balance the Conference League group stage. And we saw how that kind of affected Under Berlin last year. And then the league. Do do FC Köln have that sort of squad depth? They've been trying to add a lot of pieces to it, which is good to see. But Stefan Baumgart is a great manager. And the guy, I, you can't hate this guy. He's an absolute character on the sideline. But I think FC Köln just struggle a little bit. And they'll drop maybe two or three places from where they were last year. Ninth position for FC Köln. In eighth position, it is the Europa League champions, Eintracht Frankfurt. Guess who's back? Back again. Goetz is back, but they are most importantly back in the Champions League. A memorable season coming up for Frankfurt fans after their memorable season last year winning the Europa League. Onguene, a very good pickup from RB Salzburg. I cannot believe he got they got him on a free. I think that's a fantastic pickup after losing, obviously, Hinteregger, who left on a free as well. But it looks like Kostic is going to leave any day. If they can keep Kostic, big, big plus if they lose him. You're not going to find the same kind of quality that Kostic has at left wing back. But Konof is still there for another season on loan from Dortmund. That's a good plus. And I just think they want to really do well in the Champions League. But I think they're going to find it difficult balancing both Champions League and the league. But they're going to definitely improve on what they were last year in the Bundesliga. So I have them in 8th position. 7th position, it is Borussia Mönchengladbach. After a disappointing season where everybody thought they could maybe finish top 4, top 6. It was not good whatsoever. With Adi Hutter, he they left on a mutual consent. Now comes in former Norwich City manager Daniel Fark. Especially Turam. Turam needs to improve massively from a disappointing year he had last year. Plus, Mbolo leaving the club. They're going to have to find some more attacking players. And Mbolo was key to them getting some goals. So they're going to have to replace that. More signings may happen. Plus, maybe Playa leaving the club. It is going to be difficult for Daniel Fark. I think he has something to prove after his woeful times at Norwich in the top league, not in the championship, in the Premier League. He has something to prove. Borussia Mönchengladbach have a good squad. I think they just need a good manager. Daniel Fark can be that. Seventh position for Borussia Mönchengladbach. Sixth position, Union Berlin. Uh, how can you hate this club? I mean, honestly, Union constantly now over the last couple of years proved the doubters wrong and wrong and wrong again. They're obviously going to be in the Europa League group stage, which is an amazing achievement. Their first time ever in the Europa League. But as we know, Taiwo Awani, who was a breakout star last year for Union Berlin in the league, he is leaving to Nottingham Forest and in comes in from young boys, Jordan P. Fox Sibachu. So I'm excited to see how Jordan is going to do. 
I think it's a great replacement for not a lot of money they paid for him. Also, we know Union Berlin. They make always these smart unknown signings where you least expect it then they improve the squad and they could do it again and again and i think they have experience of balancing european football and the league obviously last year they went out in the group stage of the conference league i think they're going to do better and i think they're going to do once again well in the bundesliga plus they're going to have a full crowd back in their wonderful wonderful stadium that the fans built sixth position for union berlin in fifth position is going to be wolfsburg one of the more disappointing teams last year finishing in 12th position after qualifying to the champions league but why do i have them fifth position one man nico kovac after his disappointing stint as manager of monaco after his brilliance with frankfurt after doing okay with Bayern munich kovac now takes the wolfsburg job we know he's a good manager working under some circumstances. You look at his time, obviously, with Eintracht Frankfurt and leading them to the DFB Poca. I trust Nico Kovac at a sort of mid-tier club, kind of like a Wolfsburg, a Frankfurt, or a Hoffenheim or something like that. You can't trust him at a big-tier club. Losing Schlager is going to be a big miss, but I love the signing of Svanber from Bologna. I think this is going to be a big, big pickup for Wolfsburg, and I'm expecting a big season from the Danish striker, Jonas Vin, who I always give high praise for, and I think he's going to have a big season. And I think Wolfsburg will bounce back get fifth position and qualify to the Europa League or I could be totally wrong and I could be totally wrong about Nico Kovac but I do rate the manager so I have them in fifth position. In fourth position it will be Bayer Leverkusen, not Bayern Munich, Bayer Leverkusen. Cancione continue his high scoring attack. We know Leverkusen were one of the most exciting teams to watch last season across Europe, not just the Bundesliga, across Europe with Patrick Schick, Musa Diaby, Osmond, a lot of attacking options. And I'm excited to see what this team can do once again. They haven't really made a lot of signings and not a lot of departures. So they're keeping the nucleus of the side. And I like that. I think they can build upon what they did last year. It is going to be difficult balancing the Champions League because I think they're going to try and play their starting 11 in both the Bundesliga and the Champions League. But I believe in this starting 11. And Hinchapie and Ta have to be much more secure at the back. They leaked way too many easy goals. My guy, my Finnish goalkeeper, Radetsky, let in a couple easy goals. They have to be much more solid at the back. If they can, they could even push for a third or second place because their attack is just so deadly. But for now, I'm going to have Bayer Leverkusen in fourth position. In third position, I'm going to have Borussia Dortmund. Finally, finally, finally. Dortmund actually made some great signings, not in attack, but in defense. Adding Schlotterbeck and adding Sule. Yes, we can say what, what we want about Sule. He will add, actually bring some experience and some winning mentality to this side. And Nico Schlotterbeck, I have talked about many times. The guy is a fantastic center back and he will do wonders at Borussia Dortmund. They've also made good signings with Adeyemi and unfortunately now with the horrible news for Sebastian Haller and pray, prayers up for ha Sebastian Haller. We don't know what the circumstances are going to be. If he's going to be able to play, if he's not going to play at all. It, it's a big question mark. If he's unable to play, who then should Dortmund go and get? They should probably go and get either Icardi, Belotti. Those are some options I can think of that they can get on a cheap. Maybe he can work for a season. You can get Icardi on a loan for a season. And I maybe, maybe he has a point to prove because all he's been doing is just sitting on the bench for PSG. But I like the way Dortmund are doing business. Look, this is going to probably be Drew Bellingham's last season at the club. And I think he's going to have a monster season, especially with the World Cup coming up. And of course, with Ter Stig coming back to the side and being the manager who had a good spell as interim manager. Dortmund are moving well and obviously the big loss of Holland. I mean, we can't forget about that. They're not going to score a lot of goals, but I don't think they're going to concede as many goals this time around. And we'll see how Ter Stig can adapt with this squad. They're going to do well. I don't think they can, they don't have enough to compete against Bayern Munich. They're going to compete with RB Leipzig for second position. So Borussia Dortmund will be third position. Second position, not a shock, RB Leipzig. Kind of gave it a spoiler already when I was doing my Borussia Dortmund pick. Winning their first ever DFB Pokal is going to help this side a lot. Give them some confidence, give them a winning mentality because that was their first ever major trophy in club's history. And you can say what you want about the club. At least they won a trophy after being backed by so many millions of euros into the club. They have a great scouting system. And now, what can RB Leipzig do? Can they improve on that DFB Pokal and make him top four after it looked horrible with Jesse Marsh? Tedesco comes in and the defense was just so much more solid and Nkunku had a monster season. And they're going to keep in Kuku for one more season. And I think he's going to leave then next summer. RB Leipzig have not spent the biggest money as of now. And they've sold a couple of players like Mukiele and these sort of guys. 
Danny Olmo, Dominic Soboslai, expect big seasons from them. If they can get Raum from Hoffenheim, which looks like it's going to happen, that would be a big, big pickup. That would be a monstrous pickup because I rate this left back highly. But RB Leipzig, we all know, the very good squad. If Andre Silva could learn how to shoot and score when he has a chance, that would be even more fantastic. But we know we can't rely on Andre Silva at the moment with RB Leipzig. They have too much quality. I think they're going to do well. They're not going to compete against Bayern Munich, but they're going to finish in second position. And in first position, it's the Bayern's Liga. Bayern Munich will win it for the 11th time in a row. But it's going to be a new look Bayern Munich. Lewandowski, of course, leaving. Schule, of course, leaving. And now with the additions of Mane, De Ligt, Maswari, Grafenberg. I love these signings for Bayern Munich. But now the pressure is on Julian Nagelsmann. He's been backed. He's gotten rid of Lewandowski, who said he maybe thought, okay, he doesn't really work with my system. Let me get a guy like Mane, and I can play a front two and play my 3 5 2 formation or whatever variations of tactics that Nagelsmann loves to play with. Because we know Nagelsmann, he overthinks it sometimes. But now he has a squad he can't overthink it with. They fixed their right back situation with Maswari. That was a great pickup because we know Bayern Munich haven't had a real right back since. You let me know in the comments. When was the last time Bayern Munich had a real right back? Delete, I think, is going to bring leadership. He's going to help Obi Meccano. I already saw him against Man City, and he already made one mistake or two mistakes. Delete will help Obi Meccano massively. And with Sadio Mane, I expect the guy to get more than 20 goals in the league. He's not going to reach the same numbers as Lewandowski because Lewandowski is just a pure, pure goal scorer. But Sadio Mane is going to feel the love from the Bayern Munich fans, and I think he's going to enjoy his time massively. But like I said, Pressure is on Julian Nagelsmann because Bayern Munich looked funny last season at times. Yes, they won the league quite convincingly because nobody else could challenge them. Julian Nagelsmann has to get this side clicking. Not maybe immediately because it's going to take time adapting with all these new players. But midway through the season, I expect much better performances from Bayern. And if it doesn't, and if he's out of the Champions League, let's say in the round of 16 quarterfinals, who knows? Bayern Munich might just sack him. But that's just a crazy thought that I might have. But no doubt about that, Bayern Munich are finishing first in the Bundesliga. So let's just have a little recap of the standings as you can now see it in full picture. I think Bochum and Hertha Berlin will be relegated. That's just my early prediction. And then obviously Werder Bremen will go to the relegation playoffs. Getting the Conference League spot will be Borussia Mönchengladbach. Europa League will be Wolfsburg Union Berlin. And I think it will be the same top four and the same champion for the 11th year in a row. If you have made it this far in the video, Put in the comments, hashtag Bundesliga is back. And this is one of my favorite leagues to watch. The football is amazing. The fan support is obviously incredible. And I think it's going to be an intriguing season. With the Bundesliga, we know who the champion is going to be. But everything else, the little battles for European spots, the relegation battles, which is crazy every year. It's going to be more crazy now because Greuther Firth is not there. I'm sorry, Greuther Firth fans. I'm intrigued on how the clubs are going to do, especially with the World Cup year. How will certain players look after the World Cup, before the World Cup, mentality-wise? These are something that the managers have to think about in this crazy year of football with the World Cup and all sorts of club competitions, European club competitions. That's what makes this Bundesliga season intriguing. But like I said before, give your predictions in the comment section down below. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And if you want to become a member of the channel, the starting price is 99 cents. We have weekly members only live streams. And when the season is going, we're going to discuss all the games and probably discuss Bundesliga, Serie A, Premier League, La Liga, and all the European club competitions. So if you want to join those member live streams, hit that join button. Further ado, have a beautiful day. Stay safe and enjoy the Bundesliga season for 22-23. Adios, everybody. Mm -hmm.